Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. Uh, as you can see, I'm kind of bundled up. You wouldn't believe it, but it's actually uh, April 21st and we're having to prepare for a frost. We have frost uh, happening low in the 20, you know, low around 29 degrees. And yeah, welcome to East Tennessee. If you don't like the weather, wait a second, it's bound to change. And that's just kind of how it is around here. But anyhow, you didn't come here to have a weather report. You came here today because hopefully you want to see uh, painting tutorials and product reviews and that sort of thing, all kinds of arty stuff. And again, you came to the right place. And I'm Suzanne Barrett Justice, and I'm glad you're here. In today's video, we're going to paint a dapple gray horse that is bathed in beautiful warm light. And um, as you can see here, I'm gonna show you the photo reference right here of the horse. And he was, the, the photo references came from Roan Mountain, Tennessee. And I have a very sweet, sweet, uh, dear, dear artist and great friend, Anne, who invited us out to her place in Roan Mountain, Tennessee. And we did some plain air. There was a bunch of us artists out there and we were just having a great time. And this horse was actually there near her grounds. And I was just, you know, of course, there was all kinds of wonderful things to photograph, but of course I zoom in on the horse, right? And I knew one day I'm gonna paint this horse. This, this horse is gonna get painted. So you'll see I have a lot of different photo references and then I realized that, you know what, I've gotta keep my light consistent. And in this particular video, you're gonna see where I have to change course just a little bit because I realized that my light source that I had initially set up for my painting did not jive with the way the light was hitting the horse. And you always, always, always have to be very mindful of where your source of light is coming from. So you're gonna see how I had to troubleshoot that little maneuver. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into this painting of the dapple gray horse. So again, thank you so much for joining me. If you are my subscribers, thanks again so much. You have no idea how much I appreciate you. And if you're not, please, 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 please consider subscribing. We have fun here and you'll get to know when the next video comes out right away. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this dapple gray horse. Okay, so I've done a light wash or grounding of this canvas, which happens to be a 48 by uh, 24 stretched canvas. And I used a color called Yellow Lake by Michael Harding because I wanted to have that nice glow. Now, what you see me doing here is just doing a wipe out. I am actually taking paint thinner and wiping out the shape of my horse. So you see my horse here on the uh, left and I'm just really getting, a, I'm roughing it in. I'm just roughing it in. Obviously, I'm talking to somebody here in the studio and I'm just, uh, I'm painting away as I'm talking. But anyhow, I'm just really getting in the structure of the horse and it's, it's gonna be rather loose at first and uh, I'll be able to tweak it up and make sure the conformation and the structure of the horse is correct uh, later on into the piece. But I love using the very cool purples and pinks uh, that I see in this dapple gray horse in, in with the yellow background. Again, I love to play with complementary colors. Now, with the horse basically blocked in, or at least the structures in, I am using this other photo that you see here on the left as uh, kind of the um, idea of how I want the background to be. This is exactly the, the situation where I found this horse in Roan Mountain in this field, so I really want to include that. But I'm, uh, so you can see here, I've kind of put a light source in this piece, and you see that up there you'll see I'll be changing it soon because as I'm laying in some of this warm light on this horse I'll soon realize that I have the light source in the wrong direction but you'll see we'll fix that here in a bit
Okay, this is day two. And sometimes when I'm doing a piece, I have to switch directions. And you know, I started this all with a bright, bright cadmium yellow. Actually, it wasn't cadmium yellow. It is, uh, I used Yellow Lake by Michael Harding. And that's what I have as my um, ground for this particular piece because I wanted that brightness to shine through. I wanted the bright yellow. So I kind of started this piece. I'm gonna go ahead and move it over here so you can see as this being my light source. And so I was going to build everything and have this trail of light. Nah, nah, nah. Okay, so really I'm changing directions because the light on my horse is really not coming from here. And I don't wanna have to illuminate the whole outside portion of this horse. Since the horse, and here's my reference that I took while I was at my friend's house in Rome Mountain, I is, is actually coming from over here. <laughs> so <laughs> I am changing my light to come from here and we're gonna make this light pour over this way. So that I'm not that committed into the piece yet that I can't change directions and therefore that's what's getting ready to happen. So you're gonna see it in time lapse, obviously. And I will be changing direction of my light source because I don't wanna change the light on my horse. So. I'm gonna to continue to work in this area mainly, but then at some point I will be switching and you can see I'm making this my new light source. Now it's gonna make more sense to me. It's gonna make probably more sense to the viewer of this piece. And uh, yeah, so that's where we're going, so. Well, now that I'm back on track, um, as far as where my light's coming from, I like painting into that wet uh, surface so I can have those soft edges. So I am just kind of blocking in the background around my horse and putting in the light. So you can see I'm get, getting my lighter values and in the horse's head and you know creating the structure. I'm using my little mall stick there. You see that stick and that just helps me from uh, rubbing my arm into the paint. Since I've, I'm pretty happy with the horse I'm going ahead and laying in the background. Because I had to redirect my light source, I've got to kind of cover up some of the areas that I thought were going to be my bright trail of light. So I'm, I work better off of a dark background. So even though I have this basically very yellow, we're going ahead and covering it up so I can have my cooler dark base to jump off of here. As I'm putting in the background, of course, the further and further into the piece that I go, I want the trees to have even a uh, lighter value and a warmer glow to them. So 
That's why it helps create the depth. And oh, there's so much foliage. So I do have to kind of, <laughs> you know, I'm starting with a lot of the cooler colors and um, popping in my foliage there. Of course, it's a little bit more, uh, less detailed in the background as it is in the foreground. And again, here on the right, you see what I'm kind of loosely doing my background after, a lot of the same plants. And so there you see the goldenrod in the lower left-hand corner of the photo reference. So I'll be laying in some goldenrod here in a little bit because I need it, because I changed the composition, I need something to lead the eye to. So that goldenrod's gonna come in real handy soon. Ah, coffee. That's what powers me in the morning. <laughs> so more and more coffee. Drink up, Sue. You got a lot of painting to do. Playing in the goldenrod. And if you really look closely, the goldenrod's not highly detailed. I'm using a lot of, it's more impressionistic really, in that I am using uh, temperature shifts and value shifts to help create the form of the actual flower. So I have the cool yellows of uh, yellow ochre and maybe a little umber and green in it. And then I'm using the, the um, uh, yellow lake with white in it to create the highlights. So we're getting those goldenrod in and I really am enjoying this part. So I'll go back in to kind of cut in around my flowers. Anytime I can create contrast, that's important to me. So whether it's a value contrast or a temperature contrast, I try to get it in. So you can see I'll take that brush and put in dark values in around the flowers to help make them pop just a little bit. starting to refine a lot of the shapes in the horse and I can see some errors and I, I, I notice that my uh, leg closest to the viewer and the closest in the foreground has to be lengthened up so I'm changing that and, but I also know that I will be covering it up partly with some foliage and uh, yeah so I'm just clicking along here getting some more of the details in on the on the horse's head and the light and oh it's so much to do so much to do yet Since my palette was so dirty, not dirty, but just a lot of green and earthy tones, I went ahead and did a separate palette just for the horse. So I've actually taped it onto my uh, canvas. That's what you see there on the left. And I basically have just the horse colors, a lot of King's Blue, Titanium White, Doxazine Purple, uh, Payne's Gray, Umber, uh, a little bit more Yellow Lake. And you can see it all going in. And that's what I'm using here and getting this horse finished up. Oh, I also did have some, um, I think it's brilliant pink is the color that I have that's going into the horse's head and a little uh, burnt sienna too. But you can see all those colors are all represented there and I'm just, you know, getting in the detail and having a ball. This is a fun part for me. I love this part of a painting.
little bit of real-time video here just showing you how much foliage I really have to put in and I'm actually using a little Eclipse um, filbert by Rosemary here just getting in this paint what those are wonderful little brushes because they do allow me to do application as well blend as well as blending very seamlessly and so this is a good fun little brush I actually do use the dagger brush too I have a nice little ivory dagger brush that I do some of the finer grass but remember I'm not really wanting as much detail in the grass again it's a lot more about contrast in temperature and in value here so I'm getting this all in and oop a little goopy there and I gotta go ahead and fix that little bit of impasto paint because I really don't want it to be that sharp so that's a little king's blue and that's a great little highlighter when you need a cool highlight I love King's Blue. It's one of my favorite colors. Still so much foreground to put in, and I'm actually adding in some more uh, goldenrod in this piece. So this is what you see me painting in here, and uh, I will leave a in the description um, a little bit about the brushes that I'm using, and if you have any questions about the brushes or the palette itself and the colors that I'm using, um, please just leave it in the comment section. I'll get to you. I know I didn't actually show you the palette that I was working from, but so I have this... I have this little shaft of light. Now that light that I'm working in, it's just serendipitous that it happened to be there. It's just the late afternoon and that light streaming in and it just happens to light up this one area I happen to be working in. But I thought, you know, that's really cool. <laughs> I like how that looks. So I was kind of emphasizing it a little bit more because in the original photo references, there were little hills and mounds that were catching light. And so I was kind of wanting to do that too. So this is just kind of serendipitous that it happened that it's so well lit. Um, you'll see in the finished piece that it's not quite like this, but anyhow, but yes, please, please, please. If you have questions about the palette, um, I, I would be glad to answer anything. I basically start with the same palette. The greens that I'm using, I think I do have a little Michael Harding um, turquoise in, in some of the cool colors here, as well as the King's Blue, Sap Green, uh, Viridian. I used Ivory Black. I used, um, oh goodness gracious several browns I use Van Dyke brown too a lot but anyway that's basically your foliage colors as well as um, I had a uh, cadmium green as well to do the lighter warmer greens so yeah that's that's what that palette is basically so it's 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 not that difficult as far as what brands I, it was assorted brands I have a lot of Michael Harding and Winsor Newton in this combination of paints that I'm using And folks, here you see the finished piece. There's a little bit of glare because I did take this picture in the late afternoon, but you can see a lot of that beautiful warm light behind the horse cast on, on the actual back end of the horse and along the edges. And that was the effect I was wanting. And I really did have fun with the goldenrod. And that was very, very important, the goldenrod, for the actual overall composition. And I used a lot of contrast here. 
and it just has a nice meadowy feel and it very much was like what I saw when I was there. I think it finished up nicely. I really do like how this piece turned out. I, the work that I was, or the effect I was really trying to do here was to have that illumination. And uh, so I think I achieved it. I'm really, really happy, even with the direction I had to change on the lighting and the composition, because that, even that lighting change does change the composition because of where your eye is directed in the painting. So, you know, I, I went ahead and put the, um, uh, what do you call it, goldenrod in the lower left-hand corner of the painting to help draw the eye with that light. So sometimes we do have to make change elements in a painting just because we changed the lighting. I had to, I, I felt I needed to do that for the composition. So again, thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. And if you're not a subscriber, you know go ahead and subscribe. It's not that hard. Just go ahead and hit that little owl and become a subscriber. And uh, um, not that this video, this particular video will not be on Patreon, but I do have some really good stuff coming uh, down the pike. So do check out my Patreon channel too. And uh, we'll, we'll have fun there as well. So again, thanks so much for being here and from Kingsport, Tennessee, where it's cold right now. I'll see you. Bye.